Hey, welcome back to Fan Mama Physics. In this video, we are going to talk about graphing relationships as well as relationships between two different kinds of variables. When you do a lab, you collect data and you graph the relationship between your independent and your dependent variable, sometimes you'll get this, different kinds of patterns with your graphs. These patterns tell you a lot about the relationship of these two variables and you uh, that might lead into further discussion as well as further analysis especially if you will need to linearize your graph so this video is going to give you some language that you will be required to use in your discussions your evaluations to describe the relationship as well as to show you a couple of functions that you might see so that you know what to do with your data when you do eventually need to linear, linearize your graph, okay? So let's get started. I'm gonna get started with example number one, which sometimes you are going to see, say, uh, a relationship that looks like that. And it's a, it's a linear relationship. So it's for in, in this particular example, we have something in this case, I'm going to write here force measured in newtons is directly proportional to the mass of an object. Okay, so that's what that is. And assuming you have a good title on the top, this graph is, is an example of a linear relationship. While we are on the topic of linear relationships, there, um, there's something that I want to say that is very unique to the origin of the where this graph starts. Sometimes when you do try to, um, you, you look for a best fit line on your graph, and of course the given is that you don't try to force the graph through the origin when you're doing so. But let's say you do that and you get a, a line that doesn't intersect the origin, okay? And there's a unique, uh, there's an interesting thing you can talk about that because you might expect this relationship for the graph to intersect the origin. And if it doesn't, then that means there could be some sort of errors that, that, that is causing that. And specifically, this one could be, potentially be a calibration issue. It could be something that causes all of your data to maybe shift up on the y axis and which then could be a systematic error okay so then that's something that um that you want to look for when a graph is supposed to intersect the origin and it doesn't then there's something to talk about so i'm just going to write here systematic error because the linear relationships will start from zero and of course, you know what this one is in terms of a mathematical representation. Y is equivalent or Y is equal to X or there might be a slope associated or whatnot. Okay, next up. Next up, we have a different kind of relationship that may take the shape of form of this one. Okay. Looks like a little parabola, okay? The mathematical relationship for this one, if you are not sure, the base, at least, the foundation is x squared, okay? And the example that I have here is displacement is proportional to the square of time. So what does that look like? That would be something like distance on this side, measured in meters, Okay, my ugly writing there. And then time, right over here, measured in seconds, and of course with a good title at the top, okay? And again, this should also start at the origin, which means if it doesn't, that means either there's something in your lab that, uh, that the way how you set it up, that it's not supposed to, or that there might be some sort of systematic error if it was supposed to start at the origin, okay? All right. Displacement is directly propor is proportional to the square of time. Okay, next up we have over here uh, a different kind of relationship you might see is one that looks like this. It kind of still looks like a parabola, but it's kind of flipped in a certain way that it's uh, bending over in kind of like that. And this relationship you might have seen or you might not not have seen, it kind of looks like this. There's a square root 
and underneath um, an X. So that's the relationship base relationship there. And uh, as for the particular here, the example that I have, I have period is measured in seconds is directly proportional to the square root. And then that's the terminology we use here, square root of length, also measured in meters. So technically, I that should look like a period, whatever we use for period, it could be something like t, and then uh, square root of length, okay? It's directly proportional to that. So that would be the base equation there. Again, start should it should start from the origin, and if it doesn't, something to talk about, okay? Last but not least, in fact, this one, the next one, there's going to be two that I'm going to mention, okay? Uh, there is this one that you may or may not have seen, which is this one, okay? Uh, this one is called an inverse relationship. So what does that look like? This is uh, y is equivalent to 1 over x, x being your x uh, axes here. So here we have a gas as a volume, liters or meters cubed. I'm going to use meters cubed. And proportional to the pressure, which um, we will use pascals for that. Okay. Uh, this one you might learn, this relationship you learn later on in thermal. Um, in thermal physics, and we and uh, the terminology here is a gas as a volume is inversely proportional to its pressure. There's a thing that I have underneath here, and uh, sometimes it is very hard to see, but sometimes you might have a graph that is, um, I'm going to butcher the drawing, but something that, that's going to look very similar to that, but then this is y is equal to 1 over x squared. And you'll see these inverse square relationships in physics equations as well. And uh, the example that I have here is, uh, again, is force. And if you're not sure, if, uh, if you're wondering, this is Newton's universal law of gravitation. Fun stuff. To, and this is force is proportional to the inverse square of this the distance okay so then I will have distance here in meters okay sometimes I might get the uh, question oh which one should I use should I use 1 over x or should I use 1 over x squared when I decide to linearize my graph and um, the answer to that is there is no good answer to that <laughs> you will have to do back of research, um, background research on the physics and the scientific significance of your particular experiment to help you better decide which model is better for your graph, okay? So there's no good answer there. Sometimes it takes just uh, hard-fitting equations uh, using Excel, and sometimes one models it a little bit better, and then there's all these things that you can then talk about. Anyways, I rest my case. So really, these are the four, and I'm not really counting this one over here, but essentially the four basic uh, relationships that you'll see when you deal with analyzing your data in physics. Okay. And the other thing that I want you to keep mind of is that some of these graphs do intersect the origin, not the inverse, of course, but these do intersect the origin when you do say they are proportional to the square of proportional to the square root or whatever that is, so that if it doesn't intersect the origin, you'll need to talk about that in your experiment, in your lab at the end, okay? So hopefully this video give you a gave you a sense of uh, the, the language to use in your discussion as well as the um, the relationships in these particular graphs that you will need to use for linearization, okay? Thank you for watching. Hopefully, you'll be able to use this. And Fat Mama Physics signing out.